Okay, so we're really getting down to it now. In this section, part three, we're going to create our first class. Now we're going to create our status class. If you remember from the class diagram, we had tasks and we had statuses. So a task can have a given status at any point in time. And that's the, the first class we're going to implement in code. We'll then add our status class as a property to the DB context. So just to position DB context, if you almost think of the DB context class as like a representation of the database, that's probably a good way to think about it. We'll then create a migration. I talked about migrations in the intro. We'll go through that and how you create those. And then we'll update our database by actually running that migration. So let, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is actually add our status class in code to our application. So right click on model, add class, and then we'll call it status. Nice and simple. And we want to give it two properties. We'll give it an ID, which is, oh, tell it it's an integer first, capital I, small d. So that's effectively going to be your unique identifier of any given status. And that will actually translate to a primary key in our database, but you'll see that in a minute when we create our migration. Now the second property is a string and that just represents a given status. So to do, done, so forth. Okay, so those are our two properties. So just a quick bit about going back to the ID, why we named it capital I, small d, uh, to represent our primary key. That's something called convention over configuration the entity framework uses. And in short, what it means is if you follow a certain set of patterns laid out by entity framework, then you, you have to do minimal config so you'll see when we create our migration that it will automa it automatically knows based on the name of that attribute that it's a primary key for that given entity. If you don't follow that convention, then you have to do all sorts of manual config. So it's really a time-saving device. Okay, so we've added our class. Let's just do control B to build that. Cool, it's successful. Now this is where the magic happens. We will go now to our DB context class. Remember we created that in our setup. Now at the moment it's empty. It was derived or inherits from DB context, which is one of the core classes in Entity Framework. Now what we want to do with our status class is actually add it as a property to our DB context class. And the type of property that we're going to create is a DB set. Now, when you think about DB context as the database, a DB set property is effectively like a table or view in the database. So if you think of it like that, it's probably the easiest way to think about it. So let's create that now. So we'll make it a public DB set of type status. So basically saying we've got a, almost like we've got a table of, of statuses. We'll give it a name, statuses and then get set. Cool, all right, so we've now, we've added our status classes in code, we've added the status class as a DB set property in our DB context. Now what we're ready to do is create a migration. And this workflow is repeatable. Throughout, the, throughout your life in the Entity Framework, this, this is repeatable. So we go back into Tools, uh, NuGet Package Manager, NuGet Package Manager console. In fact, we already had it there. Let's just clear the screen. And what we want to do is just add a migration. So the command for that is add hyphen migration. And you can give it any name you like, but it all has to be one word. So we'll call it add status to DB. Give it a meaningful name so that you know that after you've created your status class, this migration is really concerned with adding that status to the DB. So any incremental changes you do, name your migrations appropriately. You can call them anything and you can do migrations at any point throughout your workflow. You don't have to do it just after you've created a class. You can do it when you edit that class and add properties or remove properties from it. It's very clever. So add migration, there we go. Now what you'll see is happened. There's a folder called migrations. And in that, we have a migration, which is basically the file that's being created for us here. 
with two methods, up and down. The up method contains code that basically creates or contains, should I say, contains the changes since the last migration was run. So in this instance, if you have a look at it, you can see we're creating a table. The table is going to be called status. It's got an ID. It's not null. It's an identity, which means, well, I'll show you what that means in a bit. It basically means the key increments by one. Uh, every time you add a new uh, item into that table, it's got a name property, which is a string. And then it also says it's a primary key. Here, all this stuff here, primary key uh, in our database. And again, that comes back to this convention over configuration and methodology. If you didn't name the primary key ID, then it wouldn't have put that in for you by uh, default. And then on our down method, it just basically says, what do we want to do to roll it back? So we'll actually come on to that in a bit, how you roll back migrations if you've made a mistake. That's what the down method is for. Okay, cool. So the last thing we need to do is just run that migration. So back into package manager console. It's quite a simple command. Update database. And I keep doing that and I've caught it this time. Do you see here I put database, database. I keep doing that and it's uh, catching me out all the time. So we hit enter. There you go. It's saying we've actually applied that migration to our database. So if we go to our database, here's our database. And if you look in our tables now, there we go. We have our status table represented in the database. And there you go. We've got a column um, ID and column name. If we just do design on that table, status, and we just alter the edit, list the properties alphabetically. You can see there's this thing here, identi identity specification. And basically what that's saying is this primary key column um, will increment by whatever seed you give it here. And by default, it's usually one every time you add a new item to it. So it means you only actually need to enter a, a, name, a value for the name. The ID will automatically be populated by SQL Server. So that's basically the first and most important part of the code first workflow, we've created a class, we've added it to our DB context, we created a migration and we run that migration. So now I think it's time to start the next section. And in that section, we are really going to unlock the power of migrations by using them to basically insert data, reference data into our database. So click on the links to go to the next video.